This is Fear Factory with Aggression Continuum. 10 tracks, 49 minutes. The 10th studio for the American band released June 2021 via Nuclear Blast. Produced by Andy Sneap. Three singles have been released, including Disruptor and Fuel Injected Suicide Machine. This album marks the longest break between releases and in the band's history, with this coming out after some serious legal dramas. And while this was the band's first time releasing with a consistent lineup since 2005, vocalist Burton C. Bell left the band prior to release. His vocals are still present on this one, though, and, it w- and they were recorded back in 2017. It's very interesting times for this band, but we will see what's uh, going on with this one. Dave, I'm really curious as to how you went with this one. Yeah. I haven't listened to Fear Factory since The Manufacture came out. That mm. album was fucking amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. At the time, there's something different that you hadn't heard before. All the songs mm. were awesome. And I remember hearing a lot about that band and talking to some mates at school and guy lent me the CD. I took it home. It's like, fuck, this is absolutely incredible. So I became a big Fear Factory fan when I was about 17. Then they released Remanufacture and that pissed me off. It was around the same time Rob Zombie released his fucking remix albums as well. And that put me off the whole new metal thing very quickly. I Mm. fucking hate remixes. Write a song, record it, then write some new ones. Don't sit in front of the computer fucking up your old ones. Anyway, Mm -hmm. Flash forward 25 years to Aggression Continuum. This is fucking great. This is the Fear Factory I knew from the um, D Manufacture, and they've moved on and experimented with some things, but it's still very much a Fear Factory album. Yep. Big sounding guitars, lots of bass, and I'm not hearing much triggers on the drums, as there was apparently some in D Manufacture. I wish Tim was here because I'd love to get his opinion on that. So there's yeah. a slight change in the drumming style. I don't really know all that much about drums, but. Yeah doesn't have that click which i which i actually liked in the previous album but this is they sound a bit more natural on this yeah, it's um, warmer right. this is warm. less yeah. less industrial in tone warmer more natural yeah which i like um mm. great composition nice contrast between the heavy and the clean tones um they always do this fucking great um clean vocals sound amazing i love i know there's an effect on it but fuck, he, he's the right vocalist to have that effect you can't just chuck that effect onto a vocalist that can't project the way he does. And it's always been one of the cool things about this band that I've heard. He's just got a great tone to his voice. Have um, you ever yeah. checked out Ascension of the Watchers? His no. other band? Check oh, that no, out. No, okay. Yeah, Ascension of the Watchers. They released an album last year. That's a good one. Check it out. Okay, I will, because, yeah, I do like his vocals. Mm. Um, it got me wondering, when New Metal was rising in popularity, was that around the same time fans started to get more aware of production because production is a big part of their sound and i think you hear more more fans talk about it than they did back in the early days so i don't know if new metal and production was something that started to develop at the same time point, but i think what nine ish nails and other bands were doing as well really put that stuff on the map too by actually yeah. making a big point of using you know industrial the sound as an instrument yeah but yeah, it's cool what they do. Um, as I've said, the vocals are great. And this is the type of harsh vocals that I like. Um, there's some melody to them. And you can actually tell who it is. A lot of yeah. people that do the harsh vocals, they sound a dime a dozen. But this, you hear a Fear Factory song, you know it's Bell. Uh, the first song, mm-hmm. Recode, that really sparked my interest straight away because there's a lot of keys in the background. And yeah. something about the style and the composition really reminded me of what you get from symphonic metal. And okay. I don't know if that was done intentionally, or, but it's very subtle. But if you listen to it closely, it's something that you would get that the backdrop of a symphonic metal song would have. So it could be yeah. cool to get a combination of those styles, industrial metal and symphonic metal. If you had like a yeah. full actual symphony rather than MIDI or sample shit, yeah. with That'd be that nice. type of production, you could mm. bring, because both are very powerful fucking forms of music. You bring them together, it could be really worth exploring. But um, yeah, Fear Factory, uh, the pioneers of industrial metal and this is how it's done right with every genre you got the originals then you got the imitators and the imitators seem to be the ones that you hear the most of but when you go back to a band that created something like this and they got a new album man it's fucking great i guess nine out of ten uh recode aggression continuum purity collapse cognitive dissonance stand out and it was a great album cool yeah that that was um I wasn't sure how you go because of the, you know, your, your general distaste. Yeah, for, I'm not a big industrial metal fan. Yeah. 
industrial isn't really your thing out of all of us that's more an area that i delve into more than than most yeah. of us but no, it was cool to hear you go so well with it um long story short if you know fear factory you know what you're getting uh this yeah. is that band and it sounds fantastic uh they just know how to do industrial metal blistering drums and riffs which is one hell of a solid platform for the vocals and the lyrics in particular to launch from this one and considering that it was done the lyrics and the vocals were done 2017 this feels really current like there are some songs on this that are like i thought they were written during the black lives matters protests and things like that it, there's some serious weight to what's going on i mean there, there usually is with burton's work in that regard but yeah. it's pretty fucking insane how you know relevant it is when it's you know pretty much almost five years old kind of thing which is you know pretty well done uh you got some nice foley on this one there's some little dialogue moments in this one as well this thing has a nice sort of sci-fi vibe to it and if you watch the the clip to recode it will kind of make sense it ties in with all that sort of stuff uh it's got this sort of post-apocalyptic you know humans versus robots kind of a vibe going on which is hard to pull off without making it really tacky but they did a really good job of it and there's a little i think nod to that at the very end which i'll get to um some nice melody there always is with these guys it's never just a full and brutal attack but there is always melody and it's that beautiful mix between that beauty and the brutality that they do so well and burton is a is a gun at it his album with geezer was fucking great as well um so he's he's really good at what he does and like you said he's distinct he's unique he doesn't sound like anyone else out there and you know who it is as soon as you hear that voice you know exactly who it is and even with the growl that's really cool yeah. um for as big of a sound wall as this has in production, this is really deep. Uh, it doesn't clip at all. It's really kicks. This punches out of speakers. There's not a lot of top end. There's a lot more focus on the bottom end, which gives it a nice warmth. And that organic feel uh, in the sounds was really appreciated. Not really heavily digitized or heavily industrialized. That that impact comes from the riffs and the drums. Sonic a bit warmer than that. Not really a sterile mix at all. And it's just... I don't know, they'd really rumble, but there was enough in the top end with the synth work going on, you know, subtly laid in beneath it all that was really well done. And then what they did with the synth too is that they used it to go along with the vocal melody, which really made that sort of stick in your head and, and turn it into a hook element, which was really cool. And then, you know, at other points, they just have, you know, it comes over the top a bit and then goes in the background again. They did a really good job with that as an instrument in the composition and the performance of it across the board. Um. It's got really nice EQ on the vocals as well, which, you know, changes the tone of them, but also, you know, uh, accents the vocals in such a way, like when it goes, you know, brutal to clean, the, the effects are always nice on them. But it also every single thing they did made the vocals cut through in the mix so the lyrics were really clear, which is really important and helped to add to that drama and impact of this one too. And that's the word for this album. It's all that impact. There, there's some really nice groove on it at the same time, though, which really does make this thing not boring or tiring at all. It's a very easy 48-minute listen. Um, and you know, there's enough tempo change in here to keep it interesting too. If you like this band or this style, you're going to find this album a very cool listen. Uh, if you don't like the genre, this won't do anything to change your mind, really. But if you're a fan, this will hit you in the sweet spot. But that said, another solid album from a pretty good fucking band. Um, they do a lot well, and this is another one. It'll be interesting to see what happens next. Um, but yeah, I don't I know where that's going. This shit. You hope so? Um, I'm not convinced. I think Burton's relatively happy doing his other stuff at the moment, so we'll see what happens. But Fear Factory without Burton after 30 years is going to be sort of interesting. But all right. Um, yeah, I think it's a very well put together album. This thing, you know, fits together nicely. It's intense, got a good story to it, and this is worth checking out. I do like the little touch where I mentioned the whole sci-fi thing. There's a there's a quote at the end: "Fear is the mind killer," and you know, I will not fear when the fear is gone. Only I'll remain. That's straight out of June for the bookworms out there, uh, no. and that was a very cool little touch that I did enjoy at the end of it too. Because at the beginning, you're talking about being the resistance. And at the end, they're talking about, in terms of what I'm taking away, you know, Paul Moadib, who became the leader of the resistance in the end. So it's a bit of an interesting little, you know, play on the whole thing there for me. So eight, out, eight and a half out of 10. I did enjoy this one a lot. I picked Purity, Recode, and End of Line. So we've got some different standouts there in amongst us as well. <laughs>